Hello, welcome to the channel. Ever since the 1980s, Microsoft Project has been one of the most popular project management software products used by the construction industry, regardless of company size and type of work. The software can be used to develop the project plan, assign resources, track progress, control budget, and solve problems. In the next few minutes, you will learn how to set up a baseline schedule using Microsoft Project, step by step. No prior experience is needed. Let's locate the software first. Find the search box besides Windows icon. Type Project to search. After you find it, double click on it to activate the software. In the initial start screen, click on Blank Project. Let's explore different parts of the window to get familiar with the interface. Left side of the screen is Gantt Spreadsheet or Task List. We will do most of the data entry here. Toolbar on the top has most of the menus and commands. Right side of the screen is Gantt Chart or Bar Chart. We will see each task will be represented by a horizontal bar, indicating its duration. By default, it will also show the relationship between tasks. We will start by entering some project basic information. Click on File at the upper left corner of the toolbar. Ensure Info tab is currently selected. Look to the right side, Find Project Information. Click on the small black arrow next to it. Then click on Advanced Properties. Fill out the project information as needed. Click OK when done. By default, Microsoft Project Scheduling is set to be manual. We will need to fix it once and for all. This time, click on Options. In the next window, click on Schedule. Under Scheduling Options for this project, change the option for New Tasks Created from Manually Scheduled to Auto Scheduled. Click OK when you are done. You will be taken back to the main screen. To know when the project is done, we need to first specify when the project starts. Under Project tab, in Properties group, click Project Information. In the Start Date box, type July 1, 25, or click the down arrow next to it to display the calendar and select July 1, 2025. Click OK. We have just successfully initiated our project. Click on the Save button at the upper left corner of the toolbar. Pick a location you want to save it and give your project a good name. Simply put your cursor under Task Name and start typing the first task name, Get Quotes. Hit Enter after you are done to move to the next. This is what it looks like when all tasks are entered. Now move your cursor to Duration, Column and enter Task Durations. Because the unit is day by default, you can simply enter 1 for 1 day, 2 for 2 days and so on. When complete, there should be no more question marks for durations. The project duration is not just adding up all task durations. Otherwise you won't need the software. Move your cursor under the predecessors column. As Get Quotes is the first task, please do not enter anything for the first line. Move to Order Lumber, type the task ID of the first task, 1. This means Get Quotes before Order Lumber. That is, 1 is the predecessor of 2. Move to the next task Order Concrete. You can just use the drop down box to pick the same predecessor. Grading has nothing to do with the quotes. So no predecessor. 
For formwork, task, grading, and order lumber need to be complete first. You can use the drop down box to pick both tasks. For place concrete, task, formwork, and order concrete need to happen first. You can directly enter 3 and 5, two task IDs separated by a comma. By this time, you might notice how the start and finish dates for these tasks change due to the relationships among them. We will add a new task. Go to the next new line after the last task we entered. Type Celebrate. You can select the whole line and make the font bigger. But for its duration, this time, type 0, because milestones are just like flags and don't take time. Of course this new milestone task should be connected with the current project. Double click on it to bring up the task information dialog. In this dialog, switch to the Predecessor tab. Select Place Concrete as its predecessor. Put in 2-day lag to allow concrete curing time. Click OK. Now you will see a date, July 11th, attached to the milestone task. Remember we started the project on July 1st. The current schedule tells you the project duration is 11 calendar days, or 9 working days plus 1 weekend. We want to organize the tasks a bit. Click on Gantt Chart Format tab. Ensure both Project Summary Task and Summary Tasks are checked. Now you have a new task, Driveway, on top, which is the Project Summary Task. We will insert two new summary tasks as phases. Select Get Quotes Task and right click. From the menu, pick Insert Task. Now go down to Grading. Right click. Also pick Insert Task. Change the names of these two new tasks to Procurement and Construction, respectively. Again, you can select the two lines and change the font sizes to something bigger. Finally we are going to organize the tasks by phases. Select all three tasks below, Procurement, including, Get Quotes, Order Lumber, and Order Concrete. On the toolbar above, click on Indent button. Do the same with three other tasks below, Construction, including Grading, Formwork, and Place Concrete. On the toolbar above, also click on Indent button. Now your finished screen should look like this. You can play with Procurement and Construction to expand or collapse phases. Network Diagram is a fun way to see all task relationship in a visual format. Go to View tab. Click on Network Diagram. Use the zoom slider on the lower right corner of the screen to see the whole logic diagram. Here, tasks are shown as boxes with start date finish date, ID and duration information. The lines and arrows mean task relationships. Red color means tasks are critical or tasks that cannot be delayed. To go back to your previous view, click Gantt Chart button from the toolbar above. Let's recap what we learned. Today we learned to initiate a project with the basic information setup. 
Tasks including milestones were entered with their names and durations. Network diagram is revealed after relationships among tasks were put in. Summary tasks were used to show different levels of work breakdown structure, or WBS. If you think today's tutorial is helpful, feel free to subscribe, comment and share the video. Your feedback is important to determine the timing of the next video tutorial. Thank you.